Hey everybody, it's Mike from MW3 Designs here. And today I'm gonna go over installing a electronic pneumatic valve into a CO2 laser. Uh, here I have the Ohmtech 60 watt. Uh, this should work for any laser that's running the Ruida controller. Uh, just a few parts here from Amazon that you can order. I'll list those in the description. Uh, and let's get right into it. Okay, let's go over some of the parts that uh, I ordered here from Amazon.com. Uh, the first part, which is the main piece uh, of this install, is going to be the pneumatic valve. Um, what this is here, this is a 24-volt uh, electronic actuated air valve. Uh, so what's going to happen here is when you select the air assist in um, your light burn, uh, it's actually going to turn this valve off and on. Um, right now from the factory on my Ohmtec 60-watt laser, that is not active. Um, I figured this out when I first got the laser and turned on air assist and realized uh, there was no air you know, assist turning on. Um, I just had a small onboard compressor pump that was always running. Um, right now I'm using a standard air compressor, a quiet compressor, and we're going to be running that compressed air into this valve and then switching it on electronically. Uh, this valve does come with the six millimeter quick fittings. Uh, it comes with two of them. Um, what I also have is I do have a kit that I purchased previously. Um, and this was just to do some plumbing for my compressed air into my unit. Um, I'll put a link in the description, but this came with a lot of different Ys and uh, you know couplers and adapters, all for six millimeter uh, tube. And it also came with the tube itself. Uh, and then the next thing we have here is, uh, these are the actual connectors for the Ru uh, Ruida controller um, from Ohmtech, uh, my laser factory. It does not have the plug in the spot on the controller to uh, connect to the valve. So we'll go over that once I get to that part of the install. Um, then I also have some rectifier diodes. And basically what I'll be doing is I'll just be bridging these into the connection on the electronic valve so that we don't backfeed any power into the controller uh, from the electronic valve. And like I said, we'll go over that on the install. Um, but, uh, you know, just a few parts here. Uh, wasn't expensive. I think uh, just these parts overall here, probably right around in like 30 something bucks, just over 30 bucks for these three parts. Uh, not including this kit, but this kit was also cheap. Uh, and again, like I said, I'll put the description and the links to all these products. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, open up the side of this uh, laser and I'll show you where we'll be working. Okay, here we are on the right side of my Ohmtech 60 watt laser. Um, this is the panel that we're going to be opening up to expose the electronics that we'll be working on. Um, and this particular laser, uh, just a small little uh, triangle shaped key opens up this panel. Um, it could be the same on your laser or different. Uh, most of these lasers are the same. They do vary just a little bit. All right, so now what we're looking at here inside this panel, uh, this is the controller. Uh, this is where we're going to be making our electrical connections uh, for the electronic actuator. Um, and then what I, one of the parts that we did order from Amazon are these little green plugs here. Um, from the factory, uh, these are actually empty. There's no plugs in there. Uh, so you do buy this and this plugs right in. Um, and the two connections that we'll be making here, uh, there's one connection for a 24 volt positive, And then the negative part is going to be the one that says wind. And this is directly correlated to the air assist portion of your uh, light burn software. So let's go ahead and get into this and we'll show you how to do the wiring. Okay, so let's go over the main piece of equipment for this install. Uh, this is gonna be the pneumatic valve. All right, so what we have in the box is the valve itself. Then they'll give you two of these, look like quarter inch by six millimeter tube quick fittings, and then a little bit of Teflon tape. And now these fittings do have a little bit of a sealer on there, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little Teflon tape on there just to make sure that we get a good airtight seal. Um, and the valve itself, you'll see here, uh, these are your air connections, where you'll be threading in those little six millimeter tube adapters. Um, and you do have in, which is gonna be in from your compressor, out is gonna be out to your laser, uh, you know, laser assist airhead. Uh, now this valve itself, um, it does mount different ways. So if you unscrew this large screw here, as you can see right now, the wiring connections would be in the way of your air hose. So this just slides off and you can set this up to aim, you know, different ways so that uh, that wiring, of course, is not in the way of your air inlet. There are actually a couple of little uh, raised tabs there and some holes on here. So it'll only mount in these specific directions. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew 
our cap to the relay here, which is going to reveal our little spots for our electrical connections. And what we'll be doing connecting here is, so uh, this right here is going to be our positive. Uh, this is going to be our negative. And we're going to wire that uh, diode right in between these connections. And we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so here we have uh, my pneumatic valve. And this is the way that I set it up. Uh, this was, I just feel this is the best way that it'll work in my machine. Um, I'll probably just end up uh, Velcro mounting this probably right into the bottom of that compartment. So now we're going to go ahead and make these electrical connections. So like I said before, this is going to be our positive. This is going to be our negative. And as you can see, I already put in the diode here. I don't know if it's kind of small, but you can see that. So you're going to notice a little gray band on these and of course when they come they're straight like this but you'll see that little gray band and that little gray band is going to be the side that you're going to want to put on the positive side so go ahead and insert that right into the slots i put that in before i put the wires in and as you can see i do have the gray band on the positive side which is the same side that this light emitting diodes positive side is on and then i'm going to go ahead and make the connections here and i just have a small piece of wire that i had laying around um, it doesn't have to be a huge gauge wire. We're just dealing with 24 volts here. So we're going to go ahead and make our positive and negative connection. So we're going to go ahead and connect our positive wire. And just slide that in. And then there's just some set screws here. So slide in your wire. Tighten down your set screw. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the negative side. Slide that negative wire in there. And then go ahead and tighten down your set screw. And then just give it a tug just to make sure everything is good and that the uh, diode is in there well. So everything is set. Now we have just this small cap that goes on top and basically just feed your wire through. Um, it doesn't need to be a, a, a watertight airtight seal. So just go ahead and feed that through. And there's just a small rubber washer in there. And that rubber washer, if you were using a thicker gauge wire, of course, would uh, cinch down on that wire inside there. We'll go ahead and get that on there. And just make sure as you're, as you're pushing that down with that wire in there, just help feed the wires through so you're not making anything pinch inside there. And we'll go ahead and thread on this cap. And now our connection is made on the pneumatic valve side. Now for the controller side, we have our positive and negative here. And as I showed you in the beginning of the video on that controller, uh, there is going to be a pin for 24 volt positive and then a pin for wind. So on this pin here, this will be plugging into the Ruida controller. And that first top pin is going to be your 24 volt positive. So we're going to go ahead and insert that wire into there. And tighten that up. Grab my screwdriver. So same thing. Just insert your strip wire in there. In there. Go ahead and tighten that up. Give it a little tug. Make sure you're seated. And then your negative. Go ahead and tighten that up. And now with these little uh, these little plugs here, I'll just kind of see if I can show you. You can see that when you unscrew this, it opens up that spot. And then as you close it, it cinches down on the wire. So just make sure you have it opened all the way before you put your wire in there. All right, so our connections are made here. This is our pneumatic valve with our connection for our controller. Let's go ahead and go over to the controller, install the electric, and then we'll install the air fittings. Okay, so here we are on the side of the controller. And as you can see, I tried to zoom in a little bit better here. You can see that this says 24 volt positive and then wind. I'm going to zoom in here for you guys. See if you can see that. So 24 volt and wind. And those are the first two on that green controller. And we'll get our plug here. And as you can see, we have those are the top two on our plug. And we're going to be going right to the 24 volt and wind. So you just take this plug and it's basically just going to be plug and play. It's just going to plug right in just like that so our electrical connection is made 
And now as far as our valve goes, just for now, I'm just going to just set the valve in here, but I do plan on making a Velcro mount in here to keep everything nice and tight. And now let's move on to our air. So this is my current air connection right here. And you might say, why is there a Y adapter there? Um, I do have a Y adapter here because I was still running compressed air to my laser head uh, just without a valve. Um, so I right now I have my onboard compressor connected as well as my air compressor. And I was switching in between the two. Um, and what I had done with that is I actually put my onboard compressor on a switch so that I could turn this on and off when I wanted to. Um, previously, uh, when I ordered the machine, the onboard compressor came on every time you turned on your laser. And I always didn't want to use that versus uh, a higher air, you know, higher volume compressed air using my air compressor. So I just put that Y adapter there. Um, I might connect that later on and do two switches, uh, one for low pressure, one for high pressure. Um, and you could achieve that by actually using the status uh, button on here because your status light will come on and you can actually get that to trigger your air valve, air valve as well and you basically have a high and low air. Um, there are some other videos on YouTube about that as well. Um, I might do that as soon as I figure out how I'll go about doing that. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and make this air connection. So these are just six millimeter push tube fittings. Just push it in, pull out the connection. This is my air out to my laser head. So that is going to go into my out. And then I have my input from my air compressor here, which is just coming through the back of the unit. And that is going to go to my in. And like I said, I'm going to just mount this probably with some Velcro just so that everything stays put in there. Uh, but for the time being, just for some testing, we're going to go ahead and just let that set in there like that. Uh, but now I'm going to jump on Lightburn and I'm going to show you guys what you need to do in there. Um, the air assist is not enabled uh, from the factory. Uh, so that button, even though you click that button and you turn it green, um, it is not uh, on in the actual uh, machine settings. So we're going to hop on Lightburn and we'll go over that right now. So just to give you an idea of what I was doing previously, uh, and you've seen that Y connection I had inside my laser for the onboard air and for my other compressed air. Um, basically, I have my shop air here, and I was just running the six millimeter tube into my laser. Um, I just had it on a ball valve so I could turn that on or turn that off when I was working on jobs. And that became cumbersome because, of course, I had to turn around and, you know, turn that on or off on the wall. If I was walking away from jobs, the air would continually run. Um, that would make my compressor work harder. Uh, so now the air will come on and off with each cut on the machine. And I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so now I'm going to come over to light burn. Um, I have light burn opened. Uh, my laser is on. We are connected to the laser. Uh, make sure you're connected to the laser because this is an actual setting that's on the controller itself, not in the actual software. Um, my light burn version that I'm running right now, look in here, uh, light burn 1.3.0. Um, I haven't updated yet, uh, but just so you know that I believe it is the same in uh, the different versions as well. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to edit. You're going to go to machine settings. This is going to establish a connection with the controller. All right, so once we're in here, uh, you don't want to really mess around with any other settings in here, uh, except for what we're talking about in this video. Um, and we're going to go into vendor settings and in vendor settings, you're going to see enable air assist output, and that's going to be true or false. And now regardless if this is selected or not, you'll still see over here, it still shows air assist. So you do have that option in your cuts and layers mode. And I, when I first got this laser, I was kind of confused as to why I was turning that on and off and the air wasn't turning on or off. And it was just a constant air with that onboard compressor. Uh, but right now we're going to go in here and we are going to make this uh, enable air assist output from false. We're going to change that to true. And uh, now you'll see here it says controller settings changed. But those changes, those changes do not take effect unless you hit write. So you actually have to send that data out to the controller and rewrite it. So we're going to go ahead and click write. And it says controlling settings have been changed. Say OK. And now we should be all set to test this out. Uh, we'll go ahead right now and we'll just do a test cut. 
Um, I do have a small square in here. So what we'll do is we'll just get that square and I'll make a couple of duplicates out of this. So we'll just do four. We'll do four, four small square cuts. And I'll just put a small piece of foam material in there. And we'll go ahead and we'll make the cut and we'll see how enabling this air assist works. Okay, so we're gonna run a test here. Uh, this is just gonna be a dry run. Uh, right now the laser is off. Um, I do have the door open, uh, but like I said, the laser is off. So there is gonna be no laser uh, being shot. Uh, and right now, what you should hear is you should hear the air coming on and coming off per every cut. Uh, and what we are doing is we are just cutting these four boxes here. And you're just gonna hear the air come on for each box and turn off. So let's go ahead and run this job. All right, so there you have it. You heard that uh, pneumatic valve turn on and off uh, with each cut. And we're going to go ahead now and I'm going to turn on my exhaust fan. So things are going to get a little bit loud, but we'll turn the exhaust fan on and we'll make these cuts. All right, it's probably going to be a little bit hard to hear me because I do have my exhaust fan on. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and turn the laser on. And we're going to run these cuts with the air assist and laser on. So we'll let that, uh... all right, so here we have the cut. And as you can see, great clean cuts, uh, running some nice good air through that. Um, so, you know, running compressed air compressor with a little bit more PSI is always gonna give you better cuts, especially in thicker materials, uh, woods and things like that. Um, the onboard compressor is good, but like I said, having that extra air assist definitely helps. Um, if you guys have any questions or, uh, comments, drop them in the comments for me. Um, I hope this video helps and uh, good luck. All right, that concludes our video. Um, I hope that you guys found it intuitive uh, and I hope this will help you to install an electronic pneumatic valve in your machine. Uh, like I said, this Ohmtech machine that I had, it came with an onboard compressor, but that onboard, onboard compressor wasn't really giving me the air pressure that I wanted to uh, make cuts in larger materials uh, and things like that. So the, the higher pressure air and using that valve makes the machine a little bit more efficient. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, leave them in the comments section. Uh, like I said, I'm going to link uh, in the description to those parts that I had purchased here. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you guys, and uh, I'll see you soon.